We live. Uh, good morning and welcome to episode one, four, four, zero of down to dog. You can find us on the athletic and anywhere else you subscribe to your podcast. Go to the athletic.com backslash down to dog and get the athletic for one dollar. Of course, it is. I love joined this morning by Edgar. Slam throw. And Jay. It's Jay. Hey, good morning, boys. Taylor is a sleepy boy. Yeah, Taylor is a that, sleepy peepee. That has to be what it is, right? Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, and, and, and Taylor. And me, 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 me. I rewatched his or I re listened to his song from last week. <laughs> it was shocking. It was so weird. So weird. Shout out to Taylor. Weird week for the Thunder. Uh, Yeah. When it's oh. almost over. We got the Miami Heat tonight. Yep, yeah, beat the huh. Blazers. Beat the Blazers by eight. Another late night game. The Blazers just would not give up. They didn't know the word quit. Yeah, yeah. I went to bed and they were up by like fifteen. The Thunder were in the third quarter. And quit, they... quit is not in their vocabulary. That's right. They kept getting it to two. Yeah, yeah. They closed closed it to two, and then the Thunder had to. They laid the smack try. down. They, they were try. yeah, <laughs> and they had to try. Man. The starting lineup was great in that game. Yeah, Giddy was maybe his best game. And I feel like we say that every time Giddy just like shows any sign of life. Yeah, like, oh, gosh. <laughs> he even got the post-game interview. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he and he had it last week too. So he was by himself. Uh, they had uh, Chet was uh, with him for a second. Chet was with him for a second. Barking. Dub came over and barked. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to listen to it. Yeah, nineteen. Did Mac Biombo pass out? Yeah, what? He is okay. Yeah, he said. He Ladies and gentlemen, nice. he's okay. Was on Twitter yesterday. Did you see the video that he put out? Huh. So he put out a video that said that he has been practicing fasting, oh. and was dehydrated and like I don't know why I said that word weird. Dehydrated. No, I think um, it's decent. I think you um, said it fine. Okay, thank you. Um, and passed out because he was dehydrated. We got you didn't drink water. Yeah, fast, yeah. You don't fast from water. Yeah, you eat food too. I mean, yeah, could. It depends what kind of fast. But I don't know. Those, so that's not really the fast I would choose. Yeah. So, anyways, he's good. He'll play tonight if called upon. Hmm. Please. <laughs> At this point, though, like, sh- surely just put Mike in. Just put Mike. I agree. Like, I, I, agree. I, I, I keep Bismack on the team. Fine. No he's problem. a great guy. Yeah, keep on the team. Very, and, very uh, enjoyable personality. But Mike just makes more sense with the way this team wants to play. Yeah, definitely. So. Definitely. Uh, is one of the best offensive nights for the starting lineup in a while. Yeah. I mean, like everybody performed really well. Shave 37, 3 and 5, a steal and a block. I I was a little surprised he wasn't on the injury report at all because my guess is like a thigh bruise. Did you see him hobble out of the game? You must, you must have been asleep. You must have been sleeping. I was sleeping. But he hobbled out of the game. It did not look very good. Who's that? Shay? Shay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then nobody. The asked, heck you say? Then nobody asked about it after the, the game. You say? Um, I did like uh, <clears throat> one. Shay was awesome, and then he would just go down and just cut through the defense, mm-hmm. and just make incredible shots. It was awesome. Yeah. But giddy too, like. It was like no one was guarding him, and he'd just go straight to the basket. That's the Blazers, man. Yeah, I was about to say they're that's just uh, that's just the Blazers. Yeah, that's the mean, Blazers. Don't, earlier in the season in Portland, Thunder almost set like NBA records for mm-hmm. both like three point percentage in the game and overall field goal. Percentage. It was cra- it was crazy. He would just like do he would just like do a layup. Didn't just no one is moving towards him or doing anything. It was wild. Yeah, they have no like perimeter defense, and the Thunder like really tried to mirror that in a lot of ways at times. Uh, it was, I mean, one twenty eight to one twenty regulation. I mean, that's not <clears throat> totally abnormal, but you know, it was the Thunder should have taken care of business a little bit earlier if they would have played the kind of defense that they're capable of. I mean, you look at points per possession. And almost everything, 
was like up over one point per possession, spot up one, transition 1.1, pick and roll ball handler 1.1. I mean, they were really good. Pick and roll man, they just killed them. They got two points per possession. I don't think it's on very many possessions, but in just about everything, even in putbacks, which they usually aren't very good, and they usually don't have that many. Giddy had that one putback at the end of the game that was really timely as J-Dub missed. So on that season, this is their fourth and final game with the Trailblazers. Oh, They've yes. won 12 in a row, but all for this season, as yeah. well, which is nice. So if you look at their shooting splits for this entire series, season series against the Trailblazers, it feels weird to say Trailblazers. 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 Uh, they shot 55.8% from the field and... 4.8% from the three-point line against them this year. Wow. 81.6 from the free throw line. And, uh, yeah, so pretty, that means pretty special. We got their number. Well, and they also just Portland is not good. Huh. Well, okay. They're not <laughs> supposed to be good. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still got their number. Yeah, they're, they're oddly bad, though, because they still have NBA guys on their team. And they've they've just been wretched this season. So Giddy is shooting seventy three percent against the Blazers this year. We we just need to play the Blazers every time, and Giddy will look great. That's what yep. happened. Uh, they do not play the Blazers tonight. They play the Heat tonight. The Heat, which will be an interesting game. Uh, <laughs> the Heat, the second night of a back to back for the Heat, oh. who played. A close one last night. Let me see the score of that game. They played the the Dallas Mavericks last night. They lost 108-114. And Jimmy Butler played 38 minutes in that game. Terry Rozier played 40 minutes in that game. It was 27-6-11. and 11. Um, should, should be interesting to see who plays. But honestly, it doesn't matter if it's Jamal Kane or Orlando Robinson or maybe Patty Mills gets the start tonight. Um, it doesn't really matter who's wearing the heat uniform. They're just always find a way to be scrappy. Yeah, annoying. Yeah. You say scrappy, I say annoying. Yeah. And uh, some other, obviously, Thunder-related news is the injury to Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah. So the Minnesota Timberwolves took care of business last night against the Pacers. Anthony Edwards had maybe the craziest block. I don't know if I've ever seen one that was more athletically just off. Aw- awe-inspiring kind of thing but yeah it looked like a marvel movie or something it's crazy it was very hit his head crazy. on the basket while he was basically like could have touched the top of the entire backboard <laughs> and uh man but anyway so the i don't know that what you're gonna see probably <laughs> is that the wolves will be better <laughs> for the you know the next couple weeks or whatever next month mm-hmm. but it does make the the race for the number one seed a little more interesting and the Nuggets just continue to stay right there, half a game back, a game back. Yeah, the Nuggets were so good last night. Yeah, just took care of business against the Celtics. They were really good. They just wow. they just look so calm as they're defeating. Are you watching this for the first yeah, time? Yeah, watch it for the first time. He's watching the Anthony Edwards block for the he first hits, time. He hits his head. I bet that hurt. Yeah, he's but he's just got adrenaline pumping through his veins, so he just feels nothing. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, the Nuggets looked really good. <laughs> I mean, they took care of business, like you said. Jason Tatum was really bad in this one. The Celtics are weird. Like they had that game uh, against the Warriors last week that was just a trouncing. Yeah. Then I think it was either a back to back or a couple nights later, lost to the Cavs. Lost to the Cavs on like just like the weirdest. Mm-hmm. Shot yeah. two ever. or three, two or three days later, get beat by the Nuggets. You're like, I just don't know what to. And they're 48 and 14. Yeah, all their metrics are fantastic. The metrics are Obviously, great. they're the number one team in the league. Jalen Brown is really good, but you know, when it comes down to it, your best player has to deliver for you. And I want to believe in the Celtics so badly, but Jason Tatum just keeps laying these eggs in these moments where he shouldn't. I don't know. I don't know what to think about them. He's five, he was five of 13. 15 points on 13 shots. I don't know. He looked timid, looked like he was afraid of the moment. It's not great for for Jason Tatum. But Jokic is just like 
whatever. Like, who are we playing? I don't know who this is. And just, <laughs> just ho hum. <laughs> I mean, 32, 12, and 11. And then everything else, I mean, they're just finding the right shots. Do the Celtics have a big man problem? <laughs> they might. Like Jokic, I'm, I'm. I mean, everybody has. It. Here's the thing: everybody has a Jokic problem. It's a joke. I was making a joke. Was... <laughs> I get it. Nice. But they might. I mean, I don't know. Porzingis is good. He's just as. I mean, he can't defend Jokic. Neither can Tillman or Al Horford. Nobody can. Nobody can, except for Bismack Biombo. Mm. Yeah, that's why he's here. He's the stopper. Yep. Yeah. Any of the thoughts from the Thunder this week? Uh, I mean, for the most part, they look good. I'm worried. I mean, I would be worried about a Lakers matchup because of the Anthony Davis stuff that we talked about Wednesday. But I don't know. Y'all actually made me feel better about the matchup when it was over. Oh, good. Why? Just because I think that there's the potential. Like the Thunder can obviously play better than they do did have this year yeah like some of the stats that alex was saying which i know can be directly connected to the way the lakers play defense and all of that but i'm like mm -hmm. there were some shots that shea was shea was maybe the worst game i remember him playing yeah and some of it was on the way he was defended but a lot of it was just he was forcing a lot of stuff early mm -hmm. and he was not in rhythm for the entire game mm -hmm. Uh, and then on top of that is to remember that the Lakers, like one night later, lose to the Kings. Yeah. The Lakers are capable of being they're, an I mean, all world team and also a mediocre team within yeah. the same week. So, the, I mean, they're the 10th seed. They're 34 and 30. They've lost 30 games. They have a negative point differential. They. This is not like some juggernaut team. The, speaking of, Warriors lost to the Bulls last night. <laughs> Another, they've almost, they've lost 29 games, you know? I mean, I, I think that those are probably, they're probably going to end up being the 9-10. And if you're the one seed, I don't know. We have, we do have a question about, do the Thunder want to avoid the one seed? I, I don't think you want to <laughs> avoid the one. I just don't think you, you care about avoiding the one seed. I just don't, I just don't I, I don't, think you care. I don't foresee this team doing any strategic positioning no i, no, I, I just think that. That, yeah i don't think that you do that also you have home court advantage you're playing a, a team that yeah maybe they do have an advantage over you but we all know like the the dream scenario isn't always the dream scenario you know we know that so you just play whoever you play and if you get the one seed i think that shea has a really good chance of winning the mvp and so I, and then I win money, and then L Man wins money. Did you bet him on win MVP? Yes, I did. Wow, wow! I went all in. I believe in this team, and uh, put my money where my mouth is. Wow, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the Timberwolves because, I mean, Anthony Edwards just really stepped up last night, and it's not like they beat some crazy good team. The the Pacers have not been great recently, but they play. Cavs, Lakers, Clippers are their next three. Oof. Whoa. Cavs, Oof. I mean, the Cavs are dealing with a lot of injuries. I don't know if Donovan Mitchell Yeah, they're will five back, and five in their last will ten. Be back or not. That's tonight on ESPN. Lakers, Clippers, then they Ooh, get... a back to back the Wolves playing Cleveland tonight. Mm-hmm. Yikes. Yep. And then they have they play the Jazz twice. They play in Salt Lake twice on the sixteenth and the eighteenth. Hmm. That's very strange. They, they can kind of get to know the city, you know, and then every day to walk around. It's a great city. I I love being in Salt Lake last season. Um, Nuggets, Cavs, Warriors, Pistons, Nuggets, Bulls, Rockets, Raptors, Suns. I mean, they're it's a it's not an easy schedule. So it'll be interesting to see what they're like without Towns. I wonder if they can just form more of a solid identity without Towns there. Because it does feel like they almost have to take turns down the stretch. And if it can just be like in Anthony Edwards' hands, I wonder if that's just a better thing for the Wolves. So I'm not like counting them out for the one seed. I know yeah. I know a lot of people are, but I'm not quite counting them out. I was yet. listening to Sam Amick and John Krasinski yesterday and just listen to them talk about, you know, 
things because I'm not watching the Wolves tightly enough to know that you know kind of where their deficiencies are and they've had problems offensively and mm-hmm. to lose probably your I mean not probably your second best if not first best offensive player there's no way that doesn't have some sort of impact on them but does it make it to where it is a little less your turn my turn is kind of the question yeah you know, because I don't, I, I like I said, I haven't watched them outside of the games that they played against the Thunder, but I know that Cat can be somebody that sometimes, you know, wants his, and he's done a lot to not be that much this year. But I know their offense has been problematic, uh, and losing a guy of Cat's skills, it's uh, gonna the three point shooting stuff is gonna hurt. It's like last night they're seven to twenty five from three. Yeah, what you was know, Nas Reed play? What did he play last night? Play 26 minutes off the bench. So they start Kyle Anderson in the place of Cat, which hurts spacing. So, I mean, it's it's all it, it's more likely that it that it hurts them than it helps them for sure because of the spacing. Like, they just don't have shooting. <laughs> they also signed TJ Warren to a 10 day contract and he played 16 minutes last night, which is just he gets 16 shots up. Bizarre. He got five shots up. Um, but, it's just I don't know. We'll see. It's it's gonna the spacing stuff is gonna be interesting because like there's not any real like reliable three point threat that's gonna take a lot for them, which I think is gonna be their biggest struggle because Kyle Anderson just doesn't take them. Jaden McDaniels can shoot it, but he just doesn't take that many shots. He took seven shots in that game. That's somebody that you would think, oh, he can handle more of a scoring load. Like no, like he took seven shots in this game. They still won, so I mean you can't criticize them too much. But the three ball is going to be an, an issue for them because Cat would at least take a lot and make a lot. So I'm I'm curious to see how that spins forward for them. But yeah, the Thunder have a real opportunity ahead of them if they'll seize it. I don't know if they'll seize it or not, but they have a real opportunity ahead of them. They play the next four games at home. They have Miami tonight, Memphis on Sunday, Indiana Tuesday, and Dallas next Thursday. Another 9 p.m. tip locally, which will be oh, those, those late we- games. weird again. What are you doing? And then after that. TNT, baby. Give me a plate. After that's a that, good TNT broadcast, though, right? Like, that's the normal one. Yeah, that's the Thursday night. It's not night Tuesday one. night. Yeah, yeah. Should be good. And then Memphis, Utah, Toronto after that. Like, just take care of business. Yeah, working overtime. I, I, I'm not. I mean, that's. I, I mean, there's our opportunity because that's a then, very favorable. It's it's like their easiest stretch, because then the rest of the season is not that easy. Milwaukee, Pelicans, Rockets, Suns is the next week. Like that's a tough week. Rockets I, at I, home. I hear Rockets Suns at, at home. home. Rockets I, at home. Suns at home. I hear four W's. Bucks. I don't know. Bucks what on to a think Sunday. In Milwaukee. I don't know either. Giannis is dealing with something, some Achilles tightness, Uh-oh. which is like, don't mess with that. That's terrifying. I was just like, sit down forever. Yeah. Please. We'll see in the playoffs. Yeah. And then the next week, the Knicks, but they're, they're not the Knicks. We'll see. It's like who the plays. most injury riddled. What's Jalen Brunson's timeline. Do you know? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I can do that work. We'll you see can keep we, going we'll through the schedule. I'll find that. We'll see if we can get Fred on the pod real quick. Um, Brad. Knicks, Sixers, who are also injury riddled. Boston, second out of a back to back in Boston. This is all on the road. Knicks, Philly, Boston, Indy, all on the road. So that's going to be a really tough week. So they say, I mean, he's a game time. Brunson's a game time decision tonight. Okay. So that's good. They dodged quite the bullet there. I know. It looked really scary. They're expecting to see OG back somewhere around March 10th. Randall, March 21st, and Mitchell Robinson actually is going to be coming back at the end of March as well. So it could be a full squad. I highly doubt it, but yes. Yeah, could be. I saw after that injury that all the doctors got on Twitter and were like, it looks like this. I was like, yeah, that's a weird, that's a weird NBA thing. Yeah. I was like, I was could like, be oh, this. Maybe. Okay. If it's this, look for this. Yeah. This is how long his recovery is going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was interesting. Like, I've not seen them do that to any other injuries like doctors just be like hey here's my unsolicited medical advice but it was interesting <laughs> yeah 
And they were like, look, it looks like they hit here. It's like, I don't know. I can't tell by watching this. I am intrigued to see how they the Thunder play tonight, just knowing that the typical way of the heat functioning, like have the Thunder evolved offensively to handle a zone the way that the heat can go to. Because yeah. I'll never forget, I don't know if it was last season, the season before, where I think the final score was like 56 to 64 or something because they just mucked it up. It wasn't that low. Obviously, I was just kidding. But yeah, yeah. But they just muck it up. Be, <laughs> it was like, yeah, the we lowest score. definitely remember ex- lowest the score in NBA score. game of all time. But uh, I don't know. There was a few. I can't. Gosh, when was it? And I think Royce talked about this. Maybe it was the Suns game where they kind of went to a zone real quick, and the Thunder had a possession that was. I think the ball hit everybody, mm-hmm. and then made its way anyway down to the. I I, I think a, Giddy was the one that finished that one. Mm-hmm. I have a question. Mm-hmm. It feels like some people are like scared for the Thunder in the playoffs. Like, yeah. oh, you gotta, you, oh, you don't want to play this team. Oh, you don't want to play this team. And and to me, it feels like everyone should be saying that about us. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think there's any team that's like if they're in the seventh, you know, seventh or eighth seed or play in, be like, well, I don't, you know. I don't want to play the Thunder. That would be horrible. Mm-hmm. So I don't. I, I, I don't. That, I don't think. I don't really care who we play. We're you know if we play them seven times, I feel good about that. It's it's all about youth. That's the question. Yeah. Is everybody's putting now? Once again, going back to the podcast yesterday, Sam and pardon me, John Krasinski, we're talking about who has kind of the biggest target of the top, you know, four seeds. And they they both, especially with Cat being out, pick the Wolves. Yeah. Uh, just because of kind of their struggles in the past. But the only reason you would say that about the Thunder is their youth. That's can, the only thing. Can you bully ball them a little bit is kind of the big question. But not worried about that as much yeah. as I am. Just are they ready for the moment? Yeah. And I think I think they're going to surprise a ton of people. Yeah. In I- their readiness. I agree because they, you know, super young team, but they don't feel that young. They feel young in their enthusiasm and 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 they feel the way they have fun together. They're exuberance, but but they're not, they're not young. Like they play such a disciplined form of basketball and they're so well coached. And I think though, that's where I think what you're alluding to is that it just doesn't feel that way on the court. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't feel like, like, uh, like another, you know, another rookie mistake. Oh, you know, like they're making all these mm-hmm. errors. Like when I, like when I'm watching, like when, when Dagnall does a challenge, like he, his percentage of, of like winning challenges that he makes has, feels like it's like 95%. He's really good. He's very good at that. And, and he's he's very reliant on his players and his coaching staff in those moments. Like it's it's very rarely like an emotional decision. It's usually like, nope, I know that's not it. Yeah. Cause like, I've seen other teams where like when we play this is back when we played last time we played the Rockets. Like yeah. Dagnall did one. It was just like the ones all the ones he does, and yeah. we won the challenge. And the next possible play, the Rockets issued their challenge and it was because their coach was mad and that yeah. they had just won the challenge they lost it and it was like and they got a tech after and they got a tech because their coach is mad and the players was mad yeah. and so like it, it just showed that that is immaturity yeah and our team doesn't I, that i don't see that ever happening they are unusually <laughs> ma- mature yeah yeah i watching like like a weird subtle thing that i started to really enjoy about watching how teams handle challenges Mm -hmm. because if you watch they've always got one assistant coach that has an ipad or some sort of tablet in the back that is re-watching the replay trying to say yeah and they'll say they'll look and they'll be like call it or don't call it Mm -hmm. it's my one of my favorite things in the world the other day it was the uh oh whatever game we were all there together with and gosh what game was that doesn't matter irrelevant (laughs) erroneous uh, but as w- I was watching them and 
especially when it's on your home floor against Houston. Yeah, it was yeah. against Houston, and it's on your home floor. Is you kind of also expect the the in stadium or in arena team to like show you, yeah, on the big screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you could I, from where we were sitting, you could see Mark, you know, choosing choice words mm -hmm. and saying, "Where's the replay? Yep. Where's the replay?" Yeah, He's like on. looking up at the screen, like, yeah. "What are you doing?" Yep. And it was a play that he should have challenged, but he yeah. just couldn't get a good couldn't view get of it in time. Yeah. Which is I don't know. It's like a weird kind of chess move side of it, and I I hate the stoppage. Like you've talked about it famously, the the dumb one, the Grayson Allen Shea Gill, just like that. Oh my whole gosh, it killed me. Debacle it that took me. probably eight minutes. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Like, and I just can't stop it, thinking about it. It does have the potential to be a just annoyance in the game, but for the most part, I I really appreciate the way the NBA handles it, and I like. Oh, yeah. I love watching kind of the gamesmanship that's part of it. Yeah, yeah I I do agree with that. Yeah, but, but it, but I think getting back to it, they don't, they do feel unusually mature for their age, and it's yeah. like I, I just don't think it's going to be that big of a negative in the playoffs. I think that they're going to everything about this team throughout the season says they are going to step up. They are ready. They're, I, they're third in offense, and they basically have no real offensive weakness. I mean, you look at it. Like, in spot up on synergy, they're in the 83rd percentile. In – oh, man, I just clicked off it. In transition, they're very good, 67th percentile. Pick and roll ball handler, 97th percentile. Isolation, 97th percentile. On cuts, 73rd percentile. Pick and roll man, 77th. I mean – the only thing that they're not good at is handoffs, but they don't ever really run DHOs. Like it's really just mostly ISO pick and roll spot up. Like that's their like bread and butter. And they are excellent at all of those things. So I think, I think that I'm, I'm kind of with Elman. I think that they can do a lot more than people give them credit for offensively. And they make life really tough. And that's, that's the thing that people don't talk about enough is that, the way that they screen with their guards, it's really, really difficult to defend. And there are a few teams that are better equipped to handle it than others. But also, we haven't seen what Mark can do as a coach in a seven-game series. And I'm really curious to see what adjustments they can make. And I think they also have like this, these levers that they can pull that they haven't really done yet in like starting... Isaiah Joe or Aaron Wiggins or somebody else in place of Giddy in the playoffs. I think that they have other things like other looks that they can give teams that could throw them off where maybe you do play Giddy off the bench and like just play him with like the shooters off the bench. And I think that could be really good for them. So I think that there are, there are things that they can There's do some levers to be pulled. I really think there are. I also think that just that because they're not on national TV that much this season i keep going back to they didn't play on christmas day they are not getting that national exposure like i just think a lot of teams and national media people are not really seeing how just how good we are mm -hmm. and are underestimating us that's mm -hmm. changing quite a bit though yeah so one I, of the... I just think it's because it's not they're just not people just don't see them because they're not on tv enough it's true one of the trends that I've noticed over the last few games is the bench has just, the, and this is not a long-term trend. It's just the bench has kind of been underwhelming, which mm -hmm. for so much and so many, like the Suns game, they basically won with the bench, you know, and, but for the Lakers game, even the trailblazers game, the bench was not very good. It was not very good. And they didn't even like, it wasn't even, they were getting up a ton of shots, but like Isaiah Joe is, over the last 10 is shooting, I think 38.7% from the three point line, which mm -hmm. for him is abnormally low. Yeah. But you can see kind of like what has been a strength can also like that's. I, and I don't, I think it's indicative of anything playoff run, but it is one of the things that makes a little more sense to why they, they kind of flailed against the Lakers. And I think it's the other thing that was so hard about the Lakers. Is it was the first time maybe all season that they felt young. They felt really young in that one. They were out physical. Yeah, I, I that was not the best version of the Thunder, and they also second out of a back to back too. 
I that, know. That's, we always neglect that. Yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of people forget that, especially nationally, talking about the Thunder in that Lakers game. There's not going to be a second night of a back-to-back in the playoffs if they play them. Yeah. You know, you, you're well-rested for every game. What? So, I don't know. I mean, I, I still I still like the Thunder's chances against the Lakers in a playoff series. I know that many people don't. I know the Lakers are very confident, but I still think... I still think that the Thunder have shown way more consistency this season than the Lakers have. Sure. And so, I, to me, I, I would lean back on that more than I would favor the Lakers. Just I know people fear AD and LeBron. There's good reason to. But I just think the Thunder have shown more consistency and can do some different things that they did. Do you, so let me ask you a, a question about the plan. Uh-huh. So let's say, hypothetically, the Thunder get the one seed. Mm-hmm. It's going to be 6-10 seven eight excuse me seven ten eight nine in the plan right no does it go no um so eight and nine play each other or i mean nine and ten play each other okay okay nine and and ten play each other whoever loses the higher c out the higher c gets it's a double loss yeah it's a it's a double elimination yeah yeah yeah. and that's right yeah yeah seven and then the the loser plays the winner of the other one Mm -hmm. so nine ten so if you if this is our favorite game, Andrew, if the season ended today, mm-hmm. you would have in the West, you would have the Warriors Lakers winner moves on loser mm-hmm. goes home, mm-hmm. which would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Then the loser of the Mavericks Kings would go on to play the winner of that. I mean, that is loaded play in. It's loaded. Like you think the Mavericks. You think the Lakers, if they lost to the Warriors, excuse me, if they beat the Warriors, would be jacked to see Luka Doncic in a one-game winner takes all? Yeah, I, the I would not want to be in the play-in. The play-in is terrifying. Do they reseed after that? Like the lowest of the two teams plays the one seed, or is it just the? I guess the loser of whoever the, wins the winner of the second game. Yeah, winner of set winner of seven eight just goes on okay. to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, but that the winner of seven eight goes on to play the two seed. Yeah, goes on to play, the and two then the seed, winner of the which second would be game, the, which would be the Thunder. Yeah, right now. So if the Thunder, if it's stayed, it could be the Kings or the Mavericks. Kings or no, Mavs. if they're the one seed. I am so confused. No, no, no. If they're so. the two seed, I thought the that, one seed, the one seed plays whoever. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Two yeah. seed gets the higher of the it's two. It's confusing. Yes, I'm it's sorry. Confusing. But yeah, would you rather play Kings or Mavs? Kings. Nice. I know the Mavs are problematic in a lot of ways, but just knowing that Luca is on the floor, like, yeah, just creates number yeah. one an annoyance for me the whole time. Yeah, I think I agree. I don't know. I would say I would say Mavs. it would be fun for it to be the Mavs, yeah, because of the uh, proximity. Yeah, like that would be cool. Yep. Like I would probably drive down to the Battle games. of I thirty five. I thirty five battle, Red River rivalry. Red River rivalry. Um. Yeah, there would be something cool about that. It is weird, though, that that's never felt like a rivalry. You know? like no. it's, There's never been, like, animosity between the fan bases. It's just... And they've played them in the playoffs several times. Oh, yeah, I mean... Like, that, it's just... It, isn't, that, isn't that strange? Is that not weird? I think it was because that... I think if they played again now, it would potentially develop that because of people's disdain for Luka. Yeah. The thing was with those earlier iterations is the Thunder were the up and comers, but like nobody, there's uh, anybody dislike Dirk Nowitzki? Yeah. Is there anybody? Maybe people in Miami. Maybe. But they still were just like, hey, you know what? Like, you still respect him. Great job. Yeah. It's true. You wanted to see him. I mean, you're happy to see him win. Yeah. I think if they, so good. I think if they did play in the first round, there would be. Like oh. you, you could create a rivalry yes. that exists there because then it's like Luca versus Shea, who's better? Well, we yep. think Shea's better because he plays both sides of the ball. Like Luca is playing both sides of the ball this year. No, he's not. You know, yep. you know. And I guarantee you, there's going to be a play where Kenrich fouls Luca hard, and Luca kind of gets in his face, <laughs> and you know, Kenrich does the thing where he like rips the ball out of his hands after he's holding on to it. Yeah, you know, there's. It it would be I I would hate it because I just cannot stand watching Luca play, yeah. And to have to watch him minimally four times, yeah. Sweep with my team that I adore and love, like their future. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to do that. 
Although it's going to be excruciating regardless. It's gonna, I was going to say, there, there's not really a team where you're like, oh, this is going to be easy. Yeah. Like the Kings would not be easy. No, I think no, I think so. Domas would give the Thunder a lot of problems. Yeah. And has like and historically, hot and, historically give them a ton of problems. Yeah. Malik Monk is feels automatic from wherever he shoots against the Thunder. I know. Like, it's it would not there's not one easy matchup. I mean, that's the thing, is there's not there's nobody in the West that you're just like, oh yeah, they would throttle them. And I didn't really realize that the West is pretty much set one through ten as far as like who's in. Now it's all about positioning. Yeah, five and a half games back for yeah, the, Jazz. the Jazz. And the Jazz don't want to be there. A full six game back, six games back for the Rockets. Who do want to be there, but who want to be there but can't be there. Yeah, which is great for us because you know, we're gonna get a top ten pick in the draft. It's also great to watch them be miserable. It feels good. Let's just let's just get that out there. Yeah, the Thunder would have the the ninth pick in the draft today. So that's cool. Nine eleven or oh. the Jazz slip into ten. Nine and ten. So and who knows what the draft I mean, I don't think anybody has any clue. Filipowski man? Man, I would be flip so a, flip a Popowski. Yeah, flip a Popowski. I'd be so excited. I would be so pumped. I think he is perfect for the Thunder. I think he is perfect. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm going to get Sam Vecini on at, at some point to just talk. Why don't you get Filippo Paschi? Yeah, Filippo. So Filippo. Hey, Filippo. Hey, Filippo Paschi. Dude, I. I honestly, when I've I've been doing like a lot of draft research, and I just keep coming back to Filippo Paschi. That I I had a dream about Filippo Paschi on the Thunder. It's weird. So it was so weird i felt so weird when i woke up i had a dream last night that it was easter morning and i was preaching oh no oh, wow and uh you were naked <laughs> no i was i was wearing like an easter outfit except for i had this exact baseball hat on <laughs> you're like no and i'm like what? like running around like why am i wearing a why baseball did, hat like trying to I wash it out this? and i'm like trying to find hair product and i can't find any and then i woke up and i was like well time to go to the podcast what a strange evening <laughs> Uh, hey, I have some advice. You ready for it? I'm ready for it. All right. Someone who wants to remain anonymous wants to know and has this story. He met this girl while doing an internship at a firm at an audit firm that he's currently working. He's now currently working at. We met in summer of 2022 over a dating app, and after our internships, stayed in contact. While she went back off to finish school in New York, I stayed in Seattle to do the same. We would text semi frequently for a while, and eventually got to a point where we became pretty good friends. We started talking to each other at an even higher rate in October, which is when I started full time at the firm, and she was due to start in January. Since she's come back in January, we text and ping each other constantly throughout the day, hang out as much as we can. And I would say we're both very now very close. I have feelings for this girl half for a while. A few days ago, I told her how I felt about her after I got my feelings hurt when she casually mentioned a guy she'd gone out with two times that she had, that she wanted to cut off. She ended up telling me she felt horrible for putting me in that position. I'm switching to the next thing, so I'm trying to... Okay. And and was not aware I felt that way. And though her feelings are mutual, she has been feeling non-committal since moving and does not trust herself to not ruin our relationship as she is working on her anxious attachment. However, she wants to keep me in her life for a long time. I'm feeling conflicted because on one hand, she brings a lot into my life and I'd be sad if she left. And her answer implies I might still have a chance in the future. On the other hand, I can see myself getting oh. very hurt if I stay in this situation. What would L man do? Here is my thought. Yeah. He has made himself too available. Yeah. He is there. He's hanging out with her all the time. He's texting her all the time. Mm -hmm. He needs to go on dates with other girls yeah. and talk about them to her yeah. because you want what you can't have. And that's my thought. He, he needs to, he needs to like, here's a story about me. I gave a lot. I, I gave away a lot of shirts to Andrew that didn't fit me anymore. And then I never wore. Yeah. And then I saw Andrew wearing them at a thunder game. And I thought, 
I like that shirt a lot. Why? <laughs> it looks really good on Andrew. Why did I give that away? I kind of wanted it back. But it's because I can't have it anymore. I don't have it. He has it. And it looks good. And I realized, huh, I kind of want it back. You really helped me with my wardrobe. You look great. You look fan. I see it. And I'm like, he yeah, looks fantastic. <laughs> And uh, but I know that a lot of them don't fit, and I know they had fallen to the back. I didn't want them when I had them because they were always there. Yep. This is you. You're always there. Guess what? Next time she has wants to hang out. Oh, don't sorry, be there. I can't. Dude, he has friend zoned plans. himself. He is so friend, he hard. Has. They met on a dating app. Yes. But then he's friend zoned himself. He's too available. Next time you're like, oh, I can't. I'm going to get drinks with a girl. Yeah. That I met, and. That's what he needs to do. Yeah. That's my thought. Because yeah. then once he's not available, she's going to be like, oh. Huh. Yeah. Matt Noonan says, don't be someone's backup plan. It's great. Yeah. Don't do not do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Great. That would be my advice. But when in similar situations in the past, I have not. I don't take my own advice. No. So you just got to be careful. You got to actually do it. Just do it. Just do it. Uh, All right, let's take a quick break. uh, And after that, we'll do some Twitter questions. Why is is Taylor calling? I I don't know. And we're back. Taylor's calling us. After that quick break. I don't know why Taylor's calling us. Hey, what are you doing? We're podcasting. Time for some Twitter questions. Twitter questions. You've got questions and you ask them on Twitter. Now we answer them for you. This is Twitter questions. Now let's get down to it. Jay doesn't agree with my Jay advice. What's agree. your advice? What is your advice, Jay? Dude, I, I think you just got to have, I think, number one, have some patience. Have some patience. Okay. And, and don't like, don't just wait in the sense of like, uh, this is it's her bust, but just have some patience, man. Like if <laughs> if y'all enjoy each other, so I, I just am such a firm believer that like marriage is totally, totally built on friendship. And so just be her friend in the season, but continue on, like date other people. And if that's something that materializes in a different direction, then you have to redefine the other relationship. But your advice is the same as my advice. It's just our motives are a little different. That okay. mine that, is saying <laughs> mine is saying yeah, you've, never, you've never go articulated something people. so perfectly. Before. Mine is saying go date other people <laughs> so that she gets jealous and wants to date you. You're saying go date other people because if it's not right right now, maybe you'll find the next person. Yes, great. And maybe it will happen later. We're saying the same things. Yeah. Our, yeah. our motives are just right, different. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. It is, the, is, it is the same advice. Yeah. It's so much the same. It's, it's, not, so, it's so not the same. The same. <laughs> you would say to them, you what want the ice, hell? You want the ice cream cone? Both of them say yes. <laughs> Let's do our first Twitter question. It comes from at M Peacock5. It says, if the Spurs draft Cody Williams, will that create the greatest NBA rivalry ever? I mean, it I would. would not like it. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves because they're going to be picking at the top of the draft and he's going to be chosen at the top of the draft just because he's one of the best players. That could happen where it's Wimby and Cody and Chet and J Dub. That would, uh, I mean, that would be pretty cool. That would be honestly kind of awesome. Yeah. It would be pretty awesome. But yes, it would, it would definitely, it would definitely be that way. (laughs) Hoopsock69 says, Jay is saying, build a house on Friend Island. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, what I'm trying to say is like, you know, like just it's okay to be friends and but still try other things. You know what I'm the, saying? The, but the thing, the thing, okay, we're so cool. But he's he, but he's put it out there. <laughs> he's put it out there like, hey, I like you. And she didn't say, oh, grass. She, no, said, she said, I like you too. Said, I, I like you too. It. I just don't, I just don't want, like, she said, I'm feeling non committal. Yeah. Which means uh, I, I want to see other fish in this. There's, there's some other fish in the sea I'm interested in. It also could very much her being trying to be nice. And not just being like, ah, 
hard no. Uh, uh, yeah, hard. That's yeah. true. That if that's the if that's what you're catching, then it's time to move on. Oh yeah, yeah. but the other thing, you're going to sever the out, friendship. That's the truth. But like, if you got to sever the friendship, no, I don't think that. you got to sever the friendship. No, because if he goes out and dates other people, well, he might find the one there. So Tankathon, which I know is not the greatest mock draft, has the Spurs taking uh, Nikola Topic or Topic. Yeah. Cody going to the Hornets. I mean, who knows? None of that. Matters Nobody right knows. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's too early to know anything. No one really knows. Any, I mean, hey, give this, me the draft. Is give me one. the pronunciation of this. Let me see. It's, I'm on it. I uh, yeah. So this guy that's going number two for the pist to the Pistons. Risa Shea. No. Oh man. No, Zachary Risa Risa Shea. Not bad. Zachary Risa Shea. Risa Risa Shea. Yep. Shea. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Jay. Dude, what happened, to Isaiah Collier? He stinks. He went to the he season. Stinks. He went in the season like he's top just not good. One or two pick. Yeah, he's just not good. I don't know. He should have never been up that high. It just never. I'm Mikel and I watched him. We were like, what? Like, why would anybody take him at the top of the draft? He's not very big. He's he's kind of a shoot first guy. I don't know. I'm not a fan. He's not very good. I have a question about the Thunder. Mm -hmm. Has Dort made a three uh, a three in about a month? He was he had uh, five unbelievable against two. the Lakers. I didn't watch that game. <laughs> two game two games in a row. He had five threes. I'm I pretty sure. I didn't watch that game, so I missed it. But maybe I'm bad luck. So maybe just don't ask that question. Maybe I'm bad luck. Oh yeah, it could be that. Okay. Yeah, he had two against. No, he didn't hit five in a row. He hit three in the previous game. He actually, let's see. I got his, his last 10 splits here, man. It has, he ha, has made a three in every game since January, in, since the start of February until now. I don't believe that. Yeah. Don't true. believe it. Doesn't it made feel at right. least one three. He's shooting 40.7% from the three point line this year. And over the last 10, he's shooting 50.9%. Really? Yes. Yeah. He's been I crushing. I feel that way. I feel wrong. Shout okay. Out to, well, shout out to well. Dort. Hey, Dort. Dort he only up. had, he did not play well against Houston. He did not play well against San Antonio as far as shooting from the three point line. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Against, for Phoenix, being a Dort doubter. against Phoenix, he was 43%. Against the Lakers, he was 71%. And he then against the more. Blazers, he was 66.7%. He needed to take more. Hey, I stand corrected. Dort, Dort, okay. Dort slapped me on the back so hard the other night at, really? at the game. Huh. It's a strong hand. <laughs> you're like i'm fine it's like cool if you like <laughs> i just winded <laughs> no, uh, uh, my I had, I had to have my shoulder blade replaced afterwards but I'm my good. I'm my good. grandma when she hugged me would like kind of slap me on like like this, right like, in the right, right in the little like between, stingy spot oh my oh, yeah. like yeah, right there it hurt so bad did you say grandmother no i couldn't tell her you got to stop. So like, but would you have to be like, ah, it hurts so bad. Ah! So I feel you. I feel you. Sometimes love hurts, man. That's right. That's true. Um, let's go to our next Twitter question. It comes from at Dr. Matt Young, PhD one, who says, <laughs> assuming Spurs have picked number three, four five in the draft, who says no to this draft day trade? Giddy and 2024 first round pick, likely 9 through 11, via Houston or Utah, for Spurs 2024 first round pick and Zach Collins. Thunder fill at the SFPF spot with Cody Williams or Richard Share. They're not going to, nobody's trading out of, nobody's yeah, trading. This never happens. No. Yeah. It's I always the mistake of like, hey, will you take our scraps and the things we don't want? for something, a top four pick something awesome like, no please. yeah i also just don't think you want giddy and jeremy sohan on the same team although sohan is a knockdown shooter this year yeah he's a cool 32 percent. hey <laughs> so yeah i i like the Better idea than luke's version of dort hey it's true i stand corrected man lay off <laughs> lay off, <laughs> lay off the man yeah I mean, I, I think they do need somebody to get the ball to Wimby, and Giddy would be great. Giddy would be great, but I also think you need more shooting around Vic. Let's let's um, so let's 
say that and say like, no, that would be, we shouldn't do that. That'd be too good for the Spurs. Wink. Yeah. Wink. Yeah. You think yeah. that they would take uh, the Spurs would have totally embarrassed us if they did that to us. Giddy would wink. look Giddy would probably wink. be awesome. Like Giddy Giddy would probably go back to like 16, 8, and 6 with the Spurs and everybody would be like, What did we do? And then like Cody Williams is averaging like three points and like two rebounds. Like, what did we do? Hey, do y'all remember when everybody was like, I can't believe the Thunder just gave the Hornets this <laughs> I'm like they have fallen off the cliff. Yeah, oh, no. You know, honeymoon period's over. How's how's Boku doing? Um, playing pretty good for the Swarm. For the Swarm. Oh, he's playing for the G League there. The G League yeah. there. Oh no, he didn't. Oh no. Shout out! Shout out, Poku. Let's go. Are. He should just go fanny packs full time. Just on the court. Yeah. On the court. I've got two signed Poku packs. Yes, you do. <laughs> which I'm very proud of and will have for kind forever. Of, I am kind of jealous about them. I kind of want one. I know. That's what I, I mean. Well, you know I, why? Because I, I can't have them. That's right. Yeah. D- dude, you literally could just turn around and take one right now. No, I wouldn't. Let's do see that. if Andrew had to fight you. To- I wouldn't do that. I would fight I him. Do that. I would definitely fight him. Yeah. Poku fanny pack? I have, a, I, have a, I have a fanny pack. What wouldn't you fight like. somebody for in this room? What wouldn't I? Um, pretty much everything you're fighting somebody. There's for. a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff. I'm taking here. that Shaq jersey and I'm leaving. Yeah, I would yeah. fight. I would <laughs> right, fight. You just gotta slap <laughs> you in the back so hard. <laughs> you gotta break it. You gotta break the glass and then put it on. And then you're good. No, this Shaq jersey. There's a magic one. Well, I don't no, care that one. It's Sorry, signed. I don't care about him for the Suns. <laughs> it's signed. It is signed. It's signed. It is what game. The, it the is big a, coyote or whatever. The big, it was. The big cactus. The big cactus. It is a game worn jersey. Yeah. Gross. I know. Come on, man. That's the one you got for <laughs> peanut butter. Peanut that's, butter. That's the one I got for peanut butter. What was it called? The peanut the the what, what, I PB don't, PB challenge. The peanut butter sh- the shack PB challenge. Yeah. It really rolls off the tongue. It's really good. <laughs> it's great <laughs> marketing. <laughs> yes. Thank People you, Aldi. That. Do, does the podcast know that story? I think oh, yeah, I mean I've, I don't think I've I think I've told it before. That Andrew's entire personality for a semester of college was give me all the peanut butter that you can find. Yep. And he raised enough peanut butter, he got to meet Shaq. That's true. He raised the most peanut butter. This kind of goes back to that Andrew loves a deal. It's a deal. Yeah. Also a challenge. He found insane yeah. deals on peanut butter. Oh, yeah. I did. You take it. Weren't you literally taking people? If they if you bought Andrew peanut butter from Walmart, yeah. it's going back. Well, they would bring me like giant jars. And I'm like, that's really, I'm really grateful. But that is that symbolizes like three jars you don't yeah. you don't get it's still one jar it still counts as one jar yeah and so at the time you could take it back and get cash back from walmart yeah and then you would go to Aldi. and then and i would like go 10. i would buy like pallets from aldi because yeah. it was like 89 cents for a jar Smart. so where were you holding Smart. on to all of this um just a lot of it was at my house in stillwater and then some of my parents house you did a lot and then when it was time and it was time Oh, I mean, I can just tell the story. I took it. We took it to this event, and I showed up at the door with all this peanut butter, and I'm like very excited, like on pallets. Um, yeah. Do you multiple, have multiple people carrying them yeah. with you? Yeah, and multiple like carloads. Yeah, multiple carloads. And so, like, I get them. I get them all unloaded. I'm like, here's all of them. It's 535 jars of peanut butter, and I'm like, I was asking this lady, like, where am I? Like, do I have a chance to win this thing? And she's like, Oh no. No, she was like, there's somebody who has way more than you. <laughs> and I am like devastated. I'm like, I don't even want to go in. And isn't it that she's talking about you? No, no, no. I asked her. I told her I have this much. Yeah. And I think what she was thinking is I think like companies donated like. Like, like legit. Like 2000. Like, wrapped up, yeah. like jars of peanut butter. And so I am as an individual, I had like way more than anybody. But I am like devastated going into this thing. I'm like, I don't want to go. Hey, my 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 wife, who was my my fiance, my fiance, my fiance, and we go in, and I'm like, I don't even want to do this. And then they mispronounce my name when they call me up there. And that well, they tell the story of this this boy who went door to door in his neighborhood and got. And I'm like, who is this punk kid <laughs> that went and got? peanut butter door to door like I, i'm like seething at this point like who is this kid i'm i'm gonna confront him. fight him yeah i'm gonna fight him after this 
okay. And then they're like, it's Andrew Schleeks. <laughs> and I'm like still just <laughs> sitting there. And I'm like in my head, like, who is Andrew Schleeks? <laughs> <laughs> and Amy like pushes me. She's like, "That's you, <laughs> get up." The actual nine year old kid that went door to door. Andrew Schleek is back there. Like, oh, why is he going up? Why is he going up there? Anyways, but yeah, that's the jersey from that. I and, would understand getting fought for that one. Oh, definitely. And you got to. That. They flew you out to the Suns game, right? Yeah, I went and saw uh, Tim Duncan versus Shaq. That's oh, tight. that's a tight. that's. Tight. It was cool. It was very cool. That's tight. All right, let's go to our last question. Are you miffed and are you miffed? Miffed, 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 miffed and peeved. Wow. Long peeved. Are you guys miffed or peeved? I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. But it, wasn't, it was a GMB reason for not sleeping. I know, sleeping. I saw Dune too. I saw Dune too. I saw Dune too, and it was, it was good. <laughs> What about you? Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm chasing geese all the time. I'm I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I've got just giant puddles of water in my yard that I'm trying to deal with. I know we've talked about the, all of these things before. Not draining. So you need a sub pump. You need a French drain. I need a lot of things. I could use all of that. Yeah. I am uh I'm just miffed and peeved about my own life. Like Aww. I ha- I feel like I haven't slept well and two months and then we're about to come up to daylight savings time which i'm just like it'll take another month and a half for me to feel you know what you should take normalize you know what you should take a little uh a leave pm yeah it gives you a little less a little more Dude, I, I take anything like that i feel like groggy the whole i feel like day. a different person the next day and a person i don't want to to no, be no. or talk uh, to have y'all messed with like uh melatonin or anything the yeah. same thing happens to me yeah. same I, thing i can't take a lot of it i become just what about ambien no that no, yes no. that makes don't me feel that. so good don't do <laughs> don't do it that. makes me feel good whenever i sleepwalk <laughs> out like don't think <laughs> whatever you do down the street those. i eat so much cereal <laughs> in my sleep <laughs> yes Whenever you do any of those, they're that not, sounds awesome. Uh, actually, <laughs> it's not like good. Actually, good. Sleep. You have to get locked. I, I would have to be honestly. I would probably have to be like strapped down to the bed if I took it. It's really restful. Yeah, I was like, I, you I didn't sleep well because I was literally <laughs> attached. If you don't to my take head. it and immediately, like, uh, yeah, like, you're gonna stay up and you're, but you're like, you're not there. Like you're just. Hey, so I've got an experiment I'm gonna do between this week and next. So okay. I bought a, I bought a a uh, mouth guard that's supposed to help you stop snoring yeah. oh nice pretty good reviews okay saw it of course on instagram so it's uh-huh. gonna yeah. be a complete <laughs> yeah, yeah waste of money <laughs> but it's supposed to like suppress your tongue and like kind of move your jaw enough to where the air doesn't you wow know. so i'll let you guys know if my life changes yeah do you think you just need the sleep apnea machine I don't think so. I've done two different sleep tests and both times I've come no, back and said, do you don't have a sleep bath. Where do you go to sleep test? Do you well, so do I've done one. I've done sleep, one at a clinic and you go sleep somewhere. That night. was that. Yeah. And it's so here's the, they, they, they see, yeah, so put you uh, dude, all over it, you? nothing they do is going to actually let you sleep. Yeah. So, and then I did one at home. Yeah. And the one at home is they attach this like head, head piece on you that, that has a piece on your forehead that is like monitoring. And then you have to have like a thing around your nose. Can't sleep I'm that. like, nobody's yeah. sleeping like How this. are you supposed yeah. to sleep? That's so it's like, yeah, I didn't sleep last night. Oh, you didn't get any, which that's why I'm like, how, how did I not have sleep apnea? The fact that I'm pretty sure I slept 30 minutes last night. Yeah. So I've had two of those and everybody sees me and they're like, well, looking at the size of your neck and your history, I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, You've guys. got hypertension plus your neck is giant. And yeah, you probably have sleep apnea. I'm like, great. Uh, you no. have a big neck? Not, I don't think it's abnormally do I, big. Do I have a big one? Do I have a big neck? I don't feel like I do. Um, I want to, but the, the, I don't. I will never do a sleep test because I'll say you have sleep apnea and you need to wear the Darth Vader mask for the rest of your life. You know, my only one of my, I'm vain in a little bit, apparently, for yeah. certain ways. Like, I always struggle <laughs> with the idea of having, like, you see the people that have it and they have, like, the strap indentions yeah. on their face. Like, that's always something I'm like, ah, so okay. it goes away eventually. I, mean, I don't think that's like, vain. first thing. In I, the don't, morning. I think it's okay to not want that. And also, I don't to, don't think it goes away. It goes away. What do you 
when you go the way, like throughout the day. Yeah. yeah like when you I mean, wake up point. and you've slept on a pill and you have the lines, it's that. Yeah, but this is, but it this goes is, away. It's a little different, though. No, these are different. My friend, my friend wears one, and I've, and I've put it on, and I just know I need it. Wow. But I refuse, and I won't. Because you're like, I'd rather just die I early. Can't. You know, you got to go sometime, and I'm ready. <laughs> Thunder play the heat tonight in Oklahoma City. I'm excited. I'm excited for them to be back at home. They've been yeah for four games too. gone for a little while. Yeah, they're home for for a bit here. So should be which you know they're excited too, man. Sleep in their own bed. Yeah. Yep. Sleep out other people. Put on their sleep. Yeah, yeah, put, on, put on their CPAP. Yeah. Jub Jub wearing his CPAP. <laughs> Jub. <laughs> oh, shout out to Jub. Uh, all right. We will be. You back. know, Gordon Hayward would be the only person that has a CPAP. Yeah, he made a three. He did make a three. Felt good. Looked good. Steal. Pull up three. Uh huh. I thought it was his foot was so close it was going to be a two, and I'd be like, because oh, Alex dang. is in the arena. Turn yeah. Him on. Hopefully, he gets his groove back. Gordo gets his groove back. Yeah, it feels dang. Like, feels like he's on his way tonight. I hope. Watch so. it. He's going for twenty. I hope so. That'd be great. That'd be great to see. I think he's still capable of it. Yeah. Well, he's just he's trying to figure out his role. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. All right. We'll talk to you guys again on Monday.